All right. Let's see what you guys think of my flash and trash analogy in the cake <laughs> analogy. Canned whipped cream. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnered and solo dancing. Cassie has about 22 years. I have about 24. Tonight, we are talking about some layered musicality. This is kind of a continuation from what we talked about last week, um, but it's a little bit more specific. We're going to be looking at a dance from Desert City, I think. I forget what year, but it's uh, yeah, Parker yeah. Dearborn and Tori Zowie. I think it's 2016, actually. Now that I think yep. about it. Link is in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you're done, we'll get to analyzing. What we're kind of going to be looking at tonight, like I said, we're looking at layered musicality. And the way that we're going to be thinking about it is kind of like layers of a cake. And there's a couple different ways that you can kind of think of that analogy. One of the ways is kind of looking at how it's built, right? So you don't, you know, you put like the base and then the filling and then another base, depending on what kind of layering you're doing. <laughs> and then you do the frosting on top. So that's one way to look at it. And the other way is kind of like the percentage of um, each piece. So like you would have like the actual cake is obviously the largest piece. And then the filling obviously is the next. And then the frosting and any toppings that might go on is going to be the least amount. So in that situation, the, um, the actual cake would be like basics and like recognizable patterns um, and, you know, like really small musicality choices. Um, so just like, you know, small footwork changes to um, syncopate, things like that. Um, and then your filling would be like larger footwork, changing of patterns, anything like that. Um, and then like the frosting and toppings might be either like large or fast movements or big hits, anything like that. So, you know, you want to kind of look at all of those and put those together and the way that we're looking at it tonight, we're going to be looking at the different phrases and how we are building on each phrase. Like they're adding something new to each phrase. Now with this, because we're not seeing the whole song, we're only seeing a build. But if you are dancing to the full song, generally you're going to add things for each um, phrase like add new layers to it to make it more complex until you kind of hit the peak of the music so where it's most intense wherever you know what big hit might happen anything like that and then depending on if the music drops down from there or if it just kind of stays the same that determines if you either just kind of keep the level of complexity the same or if you drop it down by peeling back layers of complexity as the music continues to the end of the song. So I think that's all I need to say for the moment. So I think to the screen share, unless you want to add something. Uh, I don't think I want to add anything. But uh, as always, if you have any questions while we're going, feel free to unmute yourself or type your question in the chat. Otherwise, to the screen share. Doodly doodly doodly. Okay, so... We are looking at this first phrase here. Now, like I said, you know, if you're going to put a cake together, you want to start by making the actual cake part. So like we've mentioned before, you know, you want to start a dance by building something slowly, you know, really getting the basics first before you go anywhere. One of the things I was watching um, an all-star comp recently um, and one of the things that I saw most frequently happening was at the very beginning of the song, there wasn't any, like, there wasn't any attention paid to really getting some, like, building blocks going, right? So mm -hmm. as soon as the music came on, there was, like, fast movement um, or, you know, just really nothing basic. You know, there wasn't a send out. There wasn't any, like, swing back and forth. It was just immediately going into it. And in that case, you just don't have something to build on there, right? So 
especially the very first phrase of this song, like they're not doing much at all. Like they're doing basics. Like we're looking at, Tori does a little bit of footwork, but like I said, the like small footwork syncopations are something that I would consider to be kind of in that base level. Um, and I think what she does here is adds a little bit of uh, extra steps in where she normally would do an anchor. Mm -hmm. So really like that is still pretty minimal. I, I like to think of keeping the beginning of a song soft. Um, and I think that that still falls under that category. So, and Parker especially, like he's doing a really good job with allowing Tori to finish what she's doing. Um, that's another thing that I see uh, with leads specifically is that the follow recognizes at the beginning of the song, you know, that they want to kind of keep things chill, just like slowly work into something. And a lot of times I see leads being like, actually, I don't think so. Let's, we're going to just go right into something. And mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of like, a, I don't want to say a power struggle, but there's a, there's a difference between what the lead and the follower are doing. And right here, they're, oh, go ahead. I just want to add, coming back to your cake analogy, because I yes. think it might be helpful, is um, if you if you don't build the cake first, like you were talking about, that's literally like having a cake stand and just like, lobbing frosting and toppings onto it yep and that becomes sickly sweet it's just too much it's overwhelming so exactly Ta -da. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so you know it's really good to see that you know both of them are keeping things really bare bones at the very beginning and that's for this first phrase here um and that's what I like to see for the first phrase of a song is really not much happening, right? Just basics. And I think that the fact that Tori adds a little bit in, I like that. You know, it's nothing major. Um, it's just a very light addition to what they're doing. Um, there's not extra energy that's put into what they're doing because of the little footwork addition that she does. So that's the first phrase. Now going into the next phrase, it changes a little bit. Now they add in some energy, not a lot um, and not all at once, but we're getting there. This is, I think the last thing before the next phrase. All right, cool. But I do want to mention that you see Parker is allowing Tori to finish that ronde and the extension of the hand. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of leaders think that to be a leader that follows want to dance with, they need to know cool things. Mm -hmm. But it's actually the opposite. You need to yeah. just have strong basics and connection and give the follow the time and the space to fully participate in the partnership. Yep. Um, it really is that simple. Agreed. We're going into the next phrase now. And what you'll see is that there is some mirroring on the front and the back end of this first eight count. So um, I think the words are, since you've, something, my body has been something. Um, and <laughs> the emphasis <laughs> on it is the word since. So right here, Parker is emphasizing the word since, right? And he's doing that by giving Tori some extra momentum. And she is following through with that. So we have that the very beginning of it, right? So since is when they're adding quite a bit of energy, but then they drop it right back down to where they were previously. I think this is one of those 60 frames per second videos. Yeah. <laughs> so my hand is having to twitch on the forward arrow. Oh, good. Well, good. In case you're wondering, why is she going so slow tonight? <laughs> I am trying. Yes. So right here, 
Parker adds some energy to the connection. Do you want to talk about that quickly? Uh, yeah. So um, as Parker is driving forward, which we kind of understand is count four of the sugar push, right? He's adding more energy to it. So not only is he really driving forward with his upper body, you can see how much he's intending forward, even though his foot hasn't even touched the ground yet. And then he extends his foot out ahead of him and he really pushes off of this back foot to continue this energy. And then he uses a brace step where his right foot is way out ahead of him. And that allows him to actually post for Tori. So um, it's actually a situation where he applies a lot of energy to the system of the connection, but then immediately counterbalances it. So Tori doesn't just get yeeted into the atmosphere. <laughs> I, I joke, but that is like really important. Um, <laughs> if you are going to apply a lot of energy to the system, you need to be immediately ready to counterbalance that energy at the other end. So the follow feels secure and understands what you're actually trying to accomplish. Yep. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I have had a lead give me a ton of extra energy and then not follow through and countering it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same Z's. I yep. don't like it. Yep. <laughs> but so we see that Parker's now adding some energy here in this first four counts, I believe. And then we go into a, like a slingshot basically. And then Tori adds in some extra energy and she does that by adding in a larger movement than is necessary for this particular moment. And I don't yeah. say that in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. I think um, what I love about this dance is um, Parker is really emphasizing on dancing to the eighth notes um, in the song and like very rhythmic structure of the song, whereas Tori is dancing to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And so this movement seems to be very in line with, um, wasn't the lyric like body or something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so this is a moment where like maybe the instrumental parts of the music aren't necessarily indicating something that large, but the actual mm -hmm. language of the lyrics is. Yeah. So exactly for interpretation. Exactly. And that's the next thing I was going to say, although uh, we had two comments. So Andrew asked, how important is the direction of the energy application? Oh, direction is very important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please only apply one direction. I beg of thee <laughs> and be very clear about it. Yes. Um, so one thing that can maybe be a little confusing about this is if we watch the handholds, because it tends to do this kind of loop-de-loo situation. Yep. Um, but Parker is not telling her to go up and then down, although a little bit at the end. Her, mm -hmm. His main lead is to tell her to go that way. So his direction is very much coming from his body and his weight transfer over and across his left foot. And then the hands are just a natural kind of resulting overlapping body mechanic. Um, I will say, however, if you are dancing with a follow that is taller than you, don't don't bring your hands down this hard because if her arms are locked out, people like myself will be effing screwed. We're not, <laughs> we do not have go-go gadget arms, although I kind of wish I did. Um. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the kind of natural arcing of, of the hands in that kind of loop position is not the indication of direction. Instead, mm -hmm. that was the body lead and the weight transfer. The, mm -hmm. um, the, the hands are a natural result of that kind of in and out of the weight transfers into the handhold. But mm -hmm. the direction is a very clear down the slot to uh, screen right. Yeah. Um, and I will add that Parker tends to lead double resistance, which is something we don't see a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to. Yeah, 
exactly would like to, but it's something that we don't see very frequently in too many leads. And what he's doing right here is something that you see kind of in that double resistance, like when you're frequently using it. Yeah. I want to highlight uh, his hip swing right here. So as he's coming towards his own hands, mm -hmm. his right hip really cocks up into the right. And that creates a lot of compression between mm -hmm. his torso and his arms that he can then release to both lead Tori backwards and send his hips that way. So he's still counterbalancing her while leading her to move it yes mm -hmm. yes I only have so much brain power tonight hopefully <laughs> that made sense <laughs> I thought so cool um, do we Parker, have another question um no but there was a comment I was okay. gonna say Parker is one of the best leads to watch for lower body action mm -hmm. agreed yeah um so Aaron said also Happy International Dance Day to us who haven't touched a dance floor for over a year. Oh, it yeah. is that day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then he also said, I need to learn how then and properly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, back to what we were talking about. So yeah. Okay. So the beginning half is Parker adding energy into it. And the second half is Tori adding energy into it. And they do it in different ways, but they both are adding something, right? So we had that first phrase where pretty much everything they were both doing was very like smooth and soft and, you know, there wasn't too terribly much excess happening. But then we get to the second phrase, they both add in something, but it is one thing. <laughs> It is not them changing, you know, into fifth gear. <laughs> like, you know, we're not like, all right, let's go, go now. Go, 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 <laughs> Yeah. So um, we're just adding things in very slowly. And that is what I like to think of as adding on the next layer to all of that base is just really slowly adding in something, you know, and it doesn't have to be like anything lengthy it can just be one movement like we saw with both of them uh and this kind of reminds me a little bit it's it's the idea like we talked about on the storytelling episode when we uh talked about jordan and tots heathens mm -hmm. and also last week's episode um you can also think of layering like this the arc of a story where it slowly escalates over time and then it resolves mm -hmm. um and a lot of the problem is a lot of people start their dance up here and then this is still as far as they can go up so they don't have very much dynamic range yep. up and down um, so that's why it's so important to start small so you actually have somewhere to go yep exactly exactly and it's really important to slowly add on things right it's really important to layer as you're working through the dance. Uh, Aaron said, tips for going slow. Um, that, my first response is go to therapy. Because <laughs> <laughs> more often than not, it's not your dance ability that is creating the problem for going slow. It's a mindset issue. Yeah. Um, becoming comfortable with less not only being enough, but being right mm -hmm. and being comfortable because it can feel really intimate and vulnerable to start a dance with someone, especially on a comp floor. Yeah. Um, and not letting yourself dissociate from the situation, not letting yourself um, be so in your head that you're no longer partnering um, so I would actually say focusing on like mindfulness and, um, like emotional grounding exercises. So like mm -hmm. there's grounding in dance where you're grounding your weight into the floor, but yeah. there's also the type of grounding where you're trying to inhabit your body so you can be present. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's my advice for yeah. going slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kate said yes with 
four exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aaron said, especially with a limited vocabulary and the anxiety of a dying squirrel. <laughs> Sudden have suddenly had an image of Scrat from Ice Age <laughs> trying to dance with <laughs> with the acorn. Aaron said exactly. <laughs> and, uh, also, yeah. also one when we were talking about uh, double resistance not too long ago, and we were both like, "Yes, we want more of it." Britney Spears' "Gimme More" started playing in my head. Yeah, my tired brain is is an interesting place to exist in. Yeah. 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 Uh, Andrew said Aaron with the fire metaphors. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Aaron said, just like I wish my dancing was. <laughs> you guys are providing the entertainment tonight. No, appreciate it. You're, 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 you're helping me. I'm dead. So I can't, I can only provide so much tonight. So thank you. Andrew said shots fired. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm like so deliriously tired, but also happy right now. Love you yeah. guys. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> my, my addition to what Cassie said is to like really slow things down, just like really concentrate on like breathing and like not having to you don't have to do anything <laughs> like mm -hmm. you really don't so just really keeping that in mind is what i would suggest for um helping things go slower Ooh. Ooh. also um developing an appreciation for really um specific pieces of technique yep that's what i was gonna say next uh, <laughs> okay great mind um because uh, when Alicia and I watch a great dance, we are screaming internally about things that most people don't even notice. Mm -hmm. And it's often the small details. And when yep. you go slower, there's more time and space for small details. Mm -hmm. And just a simple weight transfer together with the perfect timing at the beginning of a dance can be divine to watch and divine to experience and to embody. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I want to add to that, that I think a lot of times, um, like hurrying through things and starting at like a really, you know, high level that, you know, so you don't have much room to grow with it. I think that has to do with being uncomfortable with your technique or with what you know, like you feel like you have to throw everything out all at once. Mm hmm. So working on your own technique is also going to be helpful for that. Yep. So, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks guys. Um, so moving into this here, I believe is the, the footwork smorgasbord. Yeah, it is. And that was the next thing I was going to talk about um, because I think this is the second half of that new phrase that we were talking mm -hmm. about. So Parker now starts adding in some footwork and some energy into what he's doing. But I want to make sure to emphasize that he's doing that when you can clearly hear the music escalating. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning of the song, there are those like eighth notes that you can hear in the background. But as you get to this particular part in the music, it gets more noticeable. So he is waiting until it is something particularly noticeable to start amping things up and working with that. Yep. Trying to decide if there's anything in particular I want to highlight about the footwork because we could literally spend the whole hour on this footwork yeah. session. Yeah. Session section. <laughs> I can make an English. One yeah, thing I that I think is a useful technique is learning how to hook one foot behind and to the side of your standing foot and then release the heel and knee of the front foot. Yep. Like, um, it's something that's fairly simple to practice on your own because everybody's knees uh, are slightly different. 
Like mm-hmm. I'm so knock kneed, it actually makes this easier on me than a normal person. <laughs> the one thing my knock knees are good for. Uh, <laughs> but it's a really simple displacement of weight directly underneath you that can add so much to what you're doing musically. Yeah. Um, Andrew said the fact that he didn't pull Tori on that first bit is insane. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Parker's great at adding in his own stuff, but it doesn't affect his follow. Yeah. Particularly when he does this larger shaping through here, mm-hmm. like he's going to cross in front and kind of hop yeah. back a little bit of a shag moment. And he is doing everything he can to not move that handhold towards him down the slot mm-hmm. especially since Tori is uh, drawing her right foot forward and across away from him yeah yeah we're getting to like max stretch here <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was expertly done yep ah, the hop over her head <laughs> I want to see him do that with me I think that'd be extra entertaining <laughs> <laughs> you would need some extra energy yeah Get, get some more air, Parker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I wanted to kind of just reiterate. So the first half of this phrase, they added in a little bit of energy. And then the second half of this phrase, they both start adding in quite a bit more energy because we are getting to... Um, Getting towards the chorus, right? We're kind of, this is, I think, the bridge-ish for the song. So we are working with that and really slowly layering that. And I I wanted to mention that because we're adding layers within a phrase, right? So the first half, they're adding a little bit. Next half, they're adding quite a bit because of that buildup of music. Well, this is why we don't like flash photography. dancers (laughs) as dancers <laughs> yeah just a lot of information it's very <laughs> disorienting okay thanks bye <laughs> i really love the choice that he made there um with that foot drag but just the way that he extended from like the back first mm-hmm. before he did anything with tori yeah, Parker's leg lines are insane. Mm-hmm. I would argue no other leader has a better looking hotel pose. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who don't know what hotel pose, that's basically hips slightly, uh, feet slightly wider than hip width apart, slight turnout, straight legs, you're a split weight yeah. and you're just standing there. Yeah. That's another one of those. You got to get comfortable with doing nothing. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just it just looks good meanwhile if i uh, accidentally hyperextend my knees in that position i look like the eiffel tower because <laughs> because my legs vote inward it's yeah that's yeah. something i str- like i have strategically had to muscle memory out of my dancing mm-hmm. to strike hotel pose correctly to not scare people mm-hmm. yeah. oh, like... aaron said he's definitely in the kyle camp of education I find it interesting. I think Parker is somewhere between Kyle and Jordan. Yeah, um, I would agree. I've worked pretty extensively with him. Um, and he takes some of the like philosophies from both of them. Um, and he meshes it together. And that's kind of why his dancing looks so unique um, in comparison to like Jordan and Kyle. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like he, I wouldn't say that he looks like either of them necessarily. Right. But I agree that he's like a unique variation on the two combined. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Aaron said just the footwork got me thinking that. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I would say that's the part that he takes from, uh, you know, what Kyle does is footwork. So um, we have moved into the chorus <laughs> and we're adding a new layer now. So we added some movement in the second phrase. Now we're in the third phrase. The third phrase, 
we're adding in like movement on the floor, right? So the first two phrases, they were in relatively the same spot. They were moving around, but not, not too terribly much. But now we're moving down the floor quite a bit from the follows to where the leads are. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out, so the chorus in this song is really pretty chill. Like there's not a drastic difference like there is with some songs. Um, and so the fact that rather than really making any of the movements that they're doing larger, Parker decided to just like move them along the floor. I think that that's a really perfect option. Um to add another layer to what they're doing. So they're adding, you know, more dimension to the dance and they're still keeping things rather chill because, you know, this song in general is more laid back, but, you know, we're still building on something, right? So we're adding in that extra like movement more so than they were doing previously. And as a side note, um, there are quite a few people and judges who believe that if you're dancing a spotlight and you don't use the floor, that's a, a point against you because yeah. when you have that much floor space, you're supposed to use it. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, that is something that also is super important when it comes to routines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not that everybody does routines, but most people watch them at the very least. And you'll notice that like when there's a lot of dynamic movement in the routines, you're more captivated by what's happening. Just like when we went through the Jordan and Tot, you know, heathens, like they were moving across the floor the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. And that makes it look a lot more dynamic. And when you have that space, you should use it. However, I will say that does not mean that you have to have a ton of energy in order to use that. Mm -hmm. You can move and use that space well and, you know, also keep things rather chill. And that's basically what they're doing here, right? So Parker's leading some pretty familiar things, but, you know, they were doing it as they were moving towards the leads, right? So we're adding that in but it's just it's not adding in like huge movements Heron said so go slow <laughs> <laughs> bingo Pretty much yeah. and then I want to talk about uh this really quick because this is uh it feels like an Argentine tango mm -hmm. style uh footwork variation yeah. know, for Parker and there's a trick to getting your foot that high mm -hmm. like yes being flexible helps but there are a number of things happen, happening. So he's bending his knee, right? Very simple. He's swinging his left leg in front of his right leg. But the other thing that's happening is he has rotated his hips to the right. Mm -hmm. And if he had not done that, if he had left his hips more square, like right here, he would not have been able to get his foot that high. It probably would have been here. So yeah. it's the rotation in the hips that allows the foot to get higher. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're flexible on top of that, that's when you can really like impress people. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will also add to that, that you can like watch his hips go from pretty like flat to angled. That right hip looks a little bit higher. Yeah. Than left. And he doesn't kill her when he releases the kick. Very mm -hmm. important detail. Yep. Sometimes you need to not completely follow through with the equal and opposite of mm -hmm. an energy. Yep. Yep. So at this point of the dance, you can see that they're both adding in things now to the like basic movements that they're doing. So that um, sugar tuck, like Parker added that footwork and Tori added in like uh, a split type thing on the end of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not exactly sure how to explain that. <laughs> uh, she slides. basically, she does like a moonwalk action. Yeah. Because uh, the majority of her weight, oh, my finger can only go oh, so fast. Okay. So right here, you can see she's placed her weight on her left foot, her heel is raised, and she's basically moonwalking 
backwards because all of her weight is staying in that left foot until I'd say about around here where she's also kind of pushing laterally into that mm-hmm. back foot. Yep. Um, but for most of that movement, her weight was completely in her left foot. Yep. Yeah. So they're both adding in more movement to their like base of you know what they're doing they could do this just plain as well but because of the point that they're at in the music which is either the chorus or right after into that next verse um not entirely sure but because they're at that point they need to you know add in more to the basics that they're doing because we've stopped now progressing you know on the floor as much like when we went from you know kind of where the falls were to where the leads are um because we aren't doing that as much now we want to add in something else that will make you know it more dynamic and that's really just them adding in small changes to the basics and i love this choice right here um it's very musical. Parker um, does that loop around the head as a word is said that's like, I forget what word it is, but he does it so that it's syncopated with that. And then Tori also adds extra into this because of the way that she keeps rotating. So she has a lot of extra shape into what she's doing. And I also want to highlight how to hit the moment on time. Parker doesn't continue pulling her towards him at this point. He brings his head toward her. Yeah. So that way she feels comfortable. Uh, her hands are just so perfect. <laughs> I-, I could watch this video over and over again, just staring at Tori's arm styling and hand styling. She does have very lovely arm styling. Gorgeous. Yes. Um... So yeah, and I like the idea of what we're doing here because we're really adding some like extra movement into what we're doing and it's kind of becoming something different than just like, you know, like a basic pattern of sorts. And now we're getting to the point where we're kind of moving on the floor again. And we're doing that when they're not doing a lot of like personal shaping and styling. Mm -hmm. So we're replacing that styling with some movement on the floor. So we're still keeping things really interesting and dynamic. Here we go, hotel pose. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Since I was just talking about that. (laughs) Yes, and I will say, so I talked about how, you know, there is like the frosting and the toppings, which should really be a really small portion of the dance. Now, I will say that I believe, in my opinion, that first um, like musical like squat thing that Tori does, I would say that's kind of the first larger movement that would be more of like, you know, topping, whatever. And I would say this is kind of a second one, right, where there's something more dramatic happening because, you know, there's kind of a level change and there's a lot of things happening all at once. So it's a bigger piece. um, And that is really the only, like the second time, in my opinion, when Tori kind of comes around him, that that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important to regulate (laughs) Mm -hmm. how much you're doing that. Because a lot of times, Especially when there is, like, music that has a lot more energy in it just at the bass level, right? So faster songs. Um, A lot of times, because there's so much energy, you'll see people do big movement, big movement, big movement. And it becomes less dynamic because there's just so much happening. It's, you know there's no contrast at all. And even though 
you know, it might be a fast song that you're working with, like there's still contrast within that song. If you listen to the song, there's still going to be build up and, you know, changes in what instruments are, you know, like highlighted and, you know, there's changes in the song. So even though it's a faster song, like you still have to have some dynamic movements that you're doing within that because otherwise it's just going to be a lot to look at um and if you are the people dancing <laughs> it's going to be overwhelming and you will be exhausted yep i just thought of an interesting all right let's see what you guys think of my flash and trash analogy in the cake <laughs> analogy canned whipped cream <laughs> like sure it's a great addition like if you want some whipped cream great but if you're just like you got the cake plate and you're going (laughs) and you're just making like a pyramid of whipped cream from a can uh no no (laughs) yes i i i appreciate that (laughs) (laughs) we're getting kind of towards the end of this and just really what they're doing is a lot more detailed than at the beginning. Even though I would kind of say like right here, we drop back down to something a little bit more simple um, Mm -hmm. after all of that movement. But I would still say that if we are comparing it to kind of like that first verse, so the first two phrases ish, there's still more happening than was happening there. Yep, we have hit that, this part. So like, we were just here with the like maximum amount of movement and energy. And now Mm -hmm. we're just gently coming down off of that. But we're not coming all the way down here again. We're staying up here. Right. Right. So I would say for this particular part of this dance, we are kind of peeling back a layer. And I would say that that layer is going to be, you know, that movement along the floor. So we're taking that away. And now they're back kind of in one area rather than moving things down, um, you know, on the floor. Yeah. So this last part, we're just kind of back at like a base level almost. You know, neither of them are doing too terribly much at that um, after Parker rotated into his own arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of them were just kind of working together rather than doing their own things. And I kind of think that just working together as a partnership is a really good base you know, when you don't have a lot of extra styling and whatnot, um, that's a really good spot. Like, you really don't have to add in a ton of stuff. Like, as long as what you're doing is, you know, enough syncopated with the music that you can see what's happening in the music, like, it's not super necessary to add in a ton of styling and individual things. And I know that there's kind of a push um, for follows, especially to be adding in things on their own. Um, And that's fair. I understand why, because, you know, there's so many good follows that you really need to be showing off if you're competing. But in general, it's not necessary. Like mm-hmm. for you to have a good dance, you don't have to add in a ton. Mm-hmm. Really, you just have to add in layers as a partnership. And sometimes that will mean adding in some extra things on your own. But as a partnership, like there doesn't have to be so many fancy things going on. And you don't have to. Like we talked about last week, you know, like forcing musicality, like you don't have to do that in order to make a dance interesting. I yeah. And Parker, then, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say Parker adds in a little bit of extra styling of his own, but we only see that for like a couple, couple beats maybe. Yeah. And then we kind of go back to working together. 
I was going to say that um, I love the way Parker adds so much like vertical pulse to his mm-hmm. dancing without actually changing too much of the height of his yeah. body. Yeah. Um, it's a great detail that I mm-hmm. really appreciate. Yep. I think a lot of times uh, when we think of like changing height, we think of, you know, like, like dropping down and mm-hmm. like, making that level change something lower but you can also make it higher as well you know like as long as it's not affecting anything that your partner is doing or you know just anything that would mess with the partnership I think it is also really nice to add in things that are up higher Mm -hmm. and Andrew said a plus dancing f minus photographer (laughs) (laughs) agreed like I want (laughs) I want someone to just race across the floor and yank the flash off of that camera. So much flash photography. So much. (laughs) That and the other thing, like, it's become so much more common to have, like, stage lights on Mm -hmm. the dance floor at dance events, like, especially for competitions. Yeah. And, like, I kind of understand the point, but it gets way too hot in those ballrooms yeah, for that yeah. to be okay. So mm-hmm. it's like, you, d- you don't want your competitors having a heat stroke yeah. on the floor. <laughs> Ideally. Uh, especially your invisibly disabled ones. Yeah. <laughs> like me. Yeah. <laughs> Who's already dying anyways. All right. Shall we stop the screen share? Yep. I think so. All right. You're, you're all going to be able to see Oreo. <laughs> his, his arm is just like down wedged behind my back. He's so comfy. Um, so unless there's any questions, um, yeah, I, I think just to recap briefly, um, just really adding in layers, like adding in new pieces is like a really important aspect to musicality um, and doing that slowly, <laughs> you know, starting from a base level, adding in one thing at a time um, and really adding that in, you know, phrase to phrase, not necessarily adding in like one eight count after the other, right? So that's kind of um, the idea of what I wanted to talk about tonight. And yeah, uh, next week we're talking about the hierarchy of musicality, which is basically going to be Something along the lines of what choices should you make and when. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So. Uh, If you have any videos you want us to analyze in the future, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments below. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, we'll be back next week. And maybe Oreo will be too. That's great. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And the points don't matter. We are to... Oh, wait, I need to not be on gallery view. Yes, I am tired. Please hold. Okay, let's try that again. All right. Ted talk away. Yes. (laughs) Oh, no. Oreo has turned around. And now his arm is like pushing into my back. No. (laughs) Oh, it's so cute. Oh, jeez. Okay, sorry. (laughs) Um, ah, Splashes. (laughs) I hope this becomes a trend.